you know, I'll start with the importance of this uh, this series. Obviously, um, there's great benefits uh, to to doing well in this window, and for us, there's uh, the finals of Nations League and the Copa America qualification. So it's a, it's a very big window, and uh, yes, I was able to uh, select the players uh, that I wanted. I went with a, a, a group that's been in these moments before. Uh, a group of players that have a strong brotherhood that have gone through a lot and have been able to react in 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 uh, you know pressure moments. So uh, for me, that was what that was very important in the in the selection. And obviously, there's there's uh, some players joining, rejoining, uh, um, Stacchio and Buchanan uh, coming back into the group. Two players that we missed the last time around, uh, which would be a, a big help also. Yeah, I think, look, uh, you know, I, I watch those guys. I've, you know, even in my past role, I've been very close in uh, in the forwards and, and and how they're progressing at their clubs. And and I think, uh, you know, when, when players go through certain moments, uh, it's about going back to, to the basics and, and doing all the little things right uh, because goals will come. And, and we've seen that from those players. So, uh, you know, I watch Kyle's games and, and, you know, he's creating opportunities and, you know, there's, there's moments in the game where you feel like, uh, you know, he's doing everything right and he's just missing that goal, right? So I think uh, for these two players, they have experience. They've been in those moments. Uh, you know, I think of Johnny. Johnny is is very strong-minded, uh, you know, and for him, he'll continue to work hard. He'll continue to to do everything he can and then the goals will come. And once they start, you know, uh, you know, goals come in buckets and, and uh, hopefully uh, when they come into camp, uh, you know, when, when I'll speak with them, I'll reiterate that and, and give them the confidence they need uh, because it's not only the goals that they bring and, and it's, it's everything else that they do and their work and their movement and how they connect the other players. And I think that's equally as important. And, and if they understand that and they grasp that, then the goals will come uh, in their work. Yeah, I think, you know, Mark uh, obviously has had that experience with the national team. He's gone to a World Cup. He's been through the qualifying, uh, you know, and I think there was a, a resurgence uh, when he left Toronto and, and, you know, speaking to some of the, the, the staff there in New England, uh, they were really happy with the way he's been performing and watched certain, you know, uh, all, all his games and, and what he's brought. And, and I think, um, you know, it was very positive. And, and I think uh, Mark uh, has that experience. When I look back at the game in, in Jamaica, he was part of that, uh, you know, so he knows the conditions there. He knows what it takes uh, to perform there. And, uh, you know, his, his performance at New England, he's still playing, he's still training. They're, they're in, this, they're in the, uh, the playoffs at the moment, so he's still in rhythm. So I think when I add up all these things with along with his experience and what he could bring uh, to the group, uh, I thought it was important to bring him back in for this, uh, for this game. It's so important to, uh, at these levels to, to have players that are in rhythm. And, uh, you know, you don't just, you know, when you don't play for five or six weeks or it, it's, it's not easy to just turn on the switch in these types of games. Uh, so it is important uh, that, that you, you know, in the selection process that there is players that are in rhythm that are, are still playing. And uh, yes, there could be one or two, but you can't have too many of those players in your, in your, in your roster. And this is what we've experienced over the years. And I, you know, I remember, uh, you know, we lost to the USA in the Nations League uh, 4-1 in, in November. And, and that was a big talking point. We had a lot of uh, players out of playoffs and, and not playing and didn't come in uh, sharp in, in that period. And, uh, you know, and we ended up uh, dropping that game. So uh, for sure, uh, you know, you, you need those players playing week in, week out and and competing at those levels. And and uh you know we the, the schedule falls a little bit in 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 that way with the mls uh, the the season of the mls that runs uh, you know from march to october and then has those down periods uh, so for us to to make up for that you know there's been january camps in the past where we've been able to to work with uh, a lot of the mls players that are out of season and that gives them also an opportunity to uh, to continue to maintain a certain form as they go into preseason. 
But it's definitely something, um, yeah, that if you want to compete at the highest levels, you need to be playing at those levels. And, and uh, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, a lot of our players are doing well or, or competing in Europe. And, and there's been a lot more players that have gone across uh, that are playing in these types of championships that allows them to play a full year and, and not have the, the, the long breaks that we, you know, that some, that MLS has. Um, but yeah, I think uh, in the end, uh, it's something that we've been dealing with over the last few years. And, uh, you know, there's there's good players in, 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 in the MLS that, that we need and that are a very important part of this team. So we find other ways to to get those players ready. And and sometimes it's it's those January camps and and uh, hopefully you, you you're able to, to keep them in form and to be ready for March. So there is there is a balancing uh a balancing situation here going on and, and, and a transition situation. And, and I think transitions are done gradually and you can't just cut a player and say, oh, okay, this guy is old and this guy's young and I'll just make the change. You know, in this world, you have to uh, gradually do that where the young player, uh, you know, in, you increase those opportunities and decrease some of the opportunities of the older player and but in that in that space the the young player needs to prove and show that he is he is better and ready to take on the, that role of, of that next player so i think it, it's a process that um you know there's there's players um that I, we've seen at the gold cup there's players that we've seen in japan uh there's players that are coming in now um and and they're all part of uh you know that 2026 cycle and and there's players that you see now that you may not see and you may not see uh it, it, you know down the road in 2026 so but i, I think it's important that uh, as a coach uh, you need to to understand that process there's there's certain players that have uh, given a lot to this country uh, that have come in every single camp that have done the utmost to help this uh, this team uh, qualify and to be where they're at today. So um, for me, it's important, yeah, to 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 balance things out. But at the same time, I have my my eye on qualifying here, which is the most important thing. And, you know, we talked about that brotherhood. Yeah, that brotherhood helped us get through qualifying. That brotherhood was at the core of our success. And I think this is what's important is uh, bringing that brotherhood to the forefront here in these two games uh, to allow us to, uh, to, to, to beat Jamaica. But at the same time, uh, there's elements of 2026 that I need to be on top of and that I need to make sure that it, it, during this process, uh, there's certain opportunities that are given along the way so that now uh, in two years or three years from now, uh, that transition is complete and players are ready to now perform for 2026. So just to clarify that, and I, I've, heard, I've heard, you know, uh, speculations about that. There, there was none of that uh with milan in, in the summer so i just want to make sure that uh, that's clear um you know i was there i was part of those discussion milan was uh, a transitioning club uh at that time and they were going into uh, europe and it was important for him uh to go back so that's the that is the the um the basis of that and there was no none of he fought with john or anything like that uh, so look, uh, for Milan, uh, like I said, you know, I kind of explained this. Milan's this guy's done a lot for this country. He's showed up uh, every camp. Uh, he's got the records, um, you know, so I have a lot of respect for Milan. And uh, yeah, look, uh, we, we all know uh, he's also at a certain age, but he he continues to perform at club. Uh, but at the same time, um, you know, for me, the, this situation, he brings this experience that we need in this moment. And then at the moment, we're focusing in on that experience to come through uh, in these next two games. And then, uh, you know, as we transition into 2024 and beyond, uh, yeah, some of those opportunities can open up or will open up for for some of the other keepers to get to get those opportunities. So I think that's the process. But I also want to make people understand that this is someone that uh, has done a lot for this country, and he is uh, at the moment uh, going to do everything he can to help this team uh, to to progress and move forward. Um, well, it's you know the, it's tough to say if if players uh will come back home but i think 
um, you know, the MLS, it's, it's a solid league. Um, you know, there's, there's players that have, that have started there and have moved on to Europe. Uh, and there's players that have, you know, played in Europe and have come back. And, and, uh, so, uh, look, I think, you know, when we speak about, uh, you know, tiers and levels, it's normal that, uh, you know, as, as a coach, you want players playing at the highest levels, uh, and there's a difference between premiership and, and MLS, right. And, and, and with, with all due respect, but, um, you know, and I think even for a player, you know, a player that, that, that has ambition and, and, and wants to, to go on to Europe and play in those leagues and, and at those levels, and for sure, they're going to, they're going to strive for that. They're going to push for that. Uh, and I think, the players in MLS and, you know, you touched on it a little bit. And, and if I think back, uh, you know, TFC and when they were doing well and, or Montreal, when they were doing well, uh, there was chemistry in those teams. And, and you think of Montreal and, you know, Alistair Johnson, Kamal playing together every day. And you think of, you know, back in the day when Ozo and Larea were together and they were just, you know, dominating a side. And, and now you see that with Vancouver. So, that's also very important when you have a group of players that are that are playing together day in day out because at the national team you don't you don't get to work with uh, with the players they're they're developing they're working at their clubs when they come in you have a you have a day and a half of training two days of training and you try to piece it all together but when you have uh, numerous players playing at a club i i think that's that that works well and you used to see that back in the day and even in europe would you you would see the top clubs at Juventus, uh, you know, the back line would be playing together and they'd be on the national team together. And it's it's all about cohesion. It's all about seeing things together. And, and, and you know, I think there's a lot of benefits uh, with that. 